בוקר. Good evening, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, watching online, those present here. To our welcome to our Tanya series. We are now ready to begin chapter 29. To find it in your Tanya, the bilingual edition on page 123. So the Alter Rebbe was discussing in the last three chapters, 26, 27, and 28, the ways. First of all, the idea was, he said, if you want to have any success in your battle against the evil inclination, in your animalistic soul, you have to have a joyous disposition. You cannot be sad, depressed, melancholy. You can't have any of that. You'll be overthrown, over, overtaken in, min, in, in no time. Then he discussed what happens if someone has real reason to be depressed. And we went through all this at length. If you have reason, and, and, and the bottom line is no depression, no, no reason is a, is a reason good enough to be depressed. And he went and explained it at great length. In chapter 29, he talks about another terrible hindrance, terrible thing that happens to a person that can disturb his <coughs> his Avedas Hashem, his service to God. And that is what he coins over here in 29, Timtum Halev. Timtum Halev means when your heart is like, it's clogged up, it's heavy like a stone. It's clogged up. What does that mean? Let's jump in and we'll discuss on chapter 29. Let's begin. There is yet an additional aspect that the Bainanim, these are the intermediary category of people, not this tzaddik and not their sinful person, must contend with. Namely, that occasionally and even frequently, this can happen more often, they experience a dullness of the heart. The heart is not moved it becomes like a stone and the person is unable to try as he might to open his heart to the service of the heart namely prayer let me explain what's happening here god created us with certain nature certain nature if you're going to stand near a fire, your hot body is going to feel hot. The closer you get to the fire, it's going to hit the hotter you will feel. If you touch the fire, you're in trouble. In the same way, we have our nature is that if our intellect, our brain, our intellect understands the goodness of something, we should be fall in love with that something. It should inspire na uh, a natural emotional attachment and attraction to that something. So, for example, it is the human nature that if your mind understands how good and exciting a certain person is, his wisdom is tremendous, their character is wonderful, everything about that person is good, and you understand it on the intellectual level, the human nature dictates is that you should then naturally your heart should then kick in take over and be attracted to that person emotionally it's a simple nature just like if you touch a fire you're going to scream from pain this is also a natural phenomenon that when you understand that something is good your heart is attracted to that Understand that that thing, something is terrible. <coughs> you're going to your heart's going to reject that person. You're going to feel a, a not I don't want to say word hate, but you know this you despise it. You want to be away from it. You'll be 
is drawn from it, huh? Okay, not just avoiding, but emotionally, emotionally distant. But if you think, if the thing is good, you'll be emotionally attracted. That's just human nature. Good food. Good food. Yeah, good food, good anything. Good anything, yeah. It's just you, if you understand this mind, understand that something is good. Now, when it comes to food, it's a little different because sometimes the food might be delicious, but it's terribly unhealthy. So your mind is telling you this is not so good, even though your heart is telling you, hey, I like it. So that's a different situation. But I'm talking about healthy attractions. If your mind tells you that something is good for you, you're going to be attracted to it. That's just human nature. What happens if someone is, is in, his mind is fully with it? He appreciates the power and goodness of something. And yet, it doesn't move his heart. His heart is not attracted. It doesn't. It's not being attracted to that thing. So, for example, I'll I'll I'll, I'll explain. I'll use the example of a, a young man and a young woman that date. Yeah. So if the person is good on every level. There's, there has to be an attraction. If there is no attraction, it means that there's something there's something about that person that's not good. Maybe everything is good, but there's something that bothers you about that. But if there's no such something, if it's all good, you should, it should trigger an emotional response. And if it doesn't, that means there's something wrong with you. Just like if you go near a fire and you don't feel the heat, what, what do you do? You realize there's something obviously wrong with me. I got to go get a, you know, I got to go to a doctor. Maybe I'm numb. Something happened. If I put my hand on the fire, it doesn't feel any sensation. I, I, I'm not drawing my hand right back. It means that there's something wrong with my hand. And I'm sick. The same thing over here. If you are if you are attracted to something in your brain, and it doesn't, I mean, as you understand in your brain, <coughs> your intellect fully appreciates something's greatness, and your heart is not responding, it means there's something wrong. Al Terebri says this something wrong is called Timtum Halev. It's the dullness of the heart. The heart is sick. Not the heart is sick. There's something about your system that's not right that's causing this dullness, your heart not to be inspired. Where, where do we see this the most? So when you someone tells you there's a good movie out there, it's not a, it's not going before you you're gonna you're gonna buy tickets and go see it. If someone tells you there's a great you know, uh, something that you can get, you're going to go get it. You're going to be attracted to it. Where we see this happen is during prayer. And we're talking about Bainim. Bainim are holy people. Very, very spiritually sensitive people. They really want to connect to God. And yet it happens, sometimes even frequently, that they cannot inspire their heart to love Hashem. Even though in their head, Makes perfect sense. They lo- their mind completely understands the greatness, how wonderful Hashem is. Yet it doesn't kick into their heart. They're not feeling a tr- a love for Hashem, a fired up love to Hashem. What do you do? And this is a real problem for Abayim. He's doing everything he could. And in the last chapter, we talked about he's trying and he gets distracted by negative thoughts. Here we're not talking about negative thoughts. His thoughts are fine. The problem is the heart. It's not going down from here to here. His heart is not moved. He's he's heavy. He's dull. He's like a stone. The opposite. What do you mean the opposite? I say all kinds of unhealthy things. Yes, very good. Well, but let yeah, I think it is. In other words, if you have your brain tells you that this thing is terrible for you, and yet you're 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 drawn to it and you want it, it means that you're yeah, it means that there's something why is your brain not controlling your heart? Your brain should be controlling your heart. If my brain tells me something is not good and my heart tells me something is good and my heart wins, 
over my brain, it means that I'm not doing what I have to. So over there, you could say is the Yetzirah. Yeah, it's just... Uh, Call that a sickness. Yeah, you're, you're, you're too, you have too weak to fight your Yetzirah. Okay. You're too weak. It's a weakness. But this isn't a weakness. That's a weakness. I don't know. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a spiritual, uh, you know, deficiency. You should be as strong. You're not strong. But we can, I can relate to that. But this is a little different. This is your heart understands, the, your mind understands the greatness of Hashem. And you're, you want to fall in love with it. And you just, the heart is not with you. Your heart is not there. Now, the Rebbe is going to say what you have to do if that happens. But this is a major hindrance for our Dainan. This can bring him down. He can feel like a failure. Let's see in the words of the Rebbe. There is yet an additional aspect that the Dainan must contend with, namely that occasion and even frequently they experience a dullness of the heart which becomes like a stone and the person is unable, try as he might, to open his heart to the service of the heart, namely prayer. We know that prayer is the time <coughs> with a heart. That's the, the, it says in the Torah, you should serve God with all your heart. Now sages tell us, what is it referring to? Prayer, because prayer is the time when our heart melts in the, love, in, in the closeness to Hashem. That's when you think about Hashem. That's when you praise Hashem. That's when you contemplate the godliness. godliness. And that's the time when your heart becomes moved by, by God, by, by, you know, no love for Hashem. But it happens that you can't. It doesn't happen for you. It just doesn't happen. Also, at times, he is unable to wage war against the evil <coughs> impulse so as to sanctify himself in the things that are permissible. We're talking about a Bainini over here, right? So a Bainini is never going to do something that is prohibited. But he has a different pipe battle. We battle all day with that which is permissible. Let me explain what I mean by that. Let's see. Sorry, this this is second. Okay. Sorry about that. The 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 <coughs> it's Miami, go right away. Part of serving Hashem is two aspects of it. I apologize for this. We have an evil inclination. We all know it well. We deal with it every day. But the evil inclination tries to get us to, to do two types of wrong. <coughs> First of all, it tries to get us to violate Hashem's will. Hashem told us 613 things that he wants for mitzvot. And he tries to get you to do against what Hashem wants. Now, a Bainini we learned in chapter 12 and 13 is not going to do anything that Hashem is, doesn't want. He will never act against Hashem's will. <clears throat> but then there's another thing. There's the other thing is the mitzvah in the Torah, which is a general mitzvah that says, Kedoshim to you, you should be holy. What does it mean to be <coughs> holy? It doesn't mean to put on tefillin because that's a separate mitzvah. It doesn't mean to, 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 to keep Shabbos because that's a separate mitzvah. We have already a mitzvah to keep Shabbos. So what's the mitzvah to be holy? The mitzvah to be holy means to sanctify yourself in those things that are permitted to you, for you to do. For example, is it permitted for you to eat kosher food? <coughs> Certainly. Is it permitted to you to be married to your wife and be intimate with your wife? Sure. Is it permitted to you to uh, to uh, 
go on vacation. See that? There's nothing wrong with going on vacation. But there's two ways you can eat food. There's two ways you can be married. There's two ways you can go on vacation. You can eat food and sanctify the food. How do you sanctify the food? And we talked about this. It's you, the, the, Most people will tell you when you make a blessing before it, when you make the blessing after you finish eating, that's sanctifying the food. That's true to a certain extent, but that's not the whole story. Sanctify yourself in your meals means to eat with a purpose, with a higher purpose. What does to eat with a higher purpose mean? That you're eating because <coughs> you want to, you, first of all, you have to eat. You have to eat. If not, you're going to be hungry and die, you, you'll starve. So you have to eat. But then, so this, so, so how much do you have to eat? As much as you need to live. That's not so much. It's a lot less than what we eat. <coughs> we a lot of times eat because we just, you know, we, we because it looks good pleasure. and it tastes good pleasure. for pleasure and so on. So that is also not the best thing. Why are you eating? Just to, so what's the, let me you have to analyze this. What's wrong with eating for pleasure? Think about it. What's wrong with eating for pleasure? What is wrong with getting pleasure out of your food? And just eating, it's not a sin. I'm eating kosher, but I want to just eat. I like this pizza. I'm going to eat this pizza right now. Why do you need the pizza? You, the doctor will tell you you need the pizza. No, it's not harmful. It's not important. Your mother will tell you you need it. Your wife will tell you. Your spouse will tell you. No. So why are you eating it? It's delicious. It's simply delicious. You eat chocolate. You eat whatever you eat, ice cream. It doesn't make a difference. Your own pleasure. So what's going on over there? Let's analyze this this act for a moment. What does it mean you're eating because you feel that you want to have this pleasure? That means this. Right now, during this act of eating, you're putting yourself above everything else. My pleasure is now more important than other things. What are these other things that you could be doing during that time? Something more more meaningful. Something more holy, something more godly. And now you're just indulging. That's called indulging. You know what indulging means? You know what the word means? You know what indulgence means? <laughs> indulgence. Is it good to indulge? In moderation. I'm not even talking about like a complete glutton. I'm talking about moderation. It's not a sin, but it's also not holy. Why is it not holy? Because what you're doing <laughs> is you're, you're giving yourself very, very un, um, exaggerated importance. My pleasures are more important. So why you? Why are you important altogether? There's only one important thing in this world. What is that? God. The minute you say, wait a minute, God, hold on for me five minutes. I got to now take care of my indulgence. You know what you just did? It's kind of like a little bit of an idol worship type of, it's almost like idol worship. It, when you really get to the, to, when you strip it to its essence, it's a, it's a little bit like, it's a, it's, a, it's a form of idol worship. I'm being, I'm putting myself now on top of everything else. I'm important. My pleasure right now is more important. So that's not a good thing, uh, even though you're not doing a sin. So the mitzvah is to sanctify yourself with everything that is permitted. In other words, just because something is permitted doesn't mean it's necessary. If you're going to do it, do it in a sanctified way, for God, for a higher purpose. I want to eat because I'm going to be healthier to serve Hashem. And do I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna eat just because I want to eat. We learned last in two two chapters before that there were these great sages that they would delay their meals by two hours, just to delay it, not because they're gonna learn instead. They would. The hours made no difference. The net the net time of the learning was gonna be the same. It's just that they pushed off the learning, the the, the eating, and they learned and just flipped the hours. Why? 
I want to eat now? No. Of course you don't. Break your, break your want. Who are you to want? Almost like, you know, who are you to want? What is your want? Who are you? You're important. What made you important? What makes you important? You're important if you're an extension of Hashem. If you're connected to Hashem, you're important. Connected to my own animalistic pleasure, what, 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 why is that important? It's not important. It's your selfish want. That's not good. That's not godly. And if it's not godly, it's not good. It's not bad, but it's not good. I agree with you about that. That I agree with you. Yeah. If you think about it, we take that to the extreme. So what? Another what's way. the what's the taking to the extreme? What will you? I mean, where, what I'm do you think the extreme? To please me, to then not to, uh, do so, for example, again. what is he not going to do? I mean, I won't eat food anymore. No, you have to eat well. You have to eat well. You yeah, have to be healthy. Eat. So I'm not saying you should take it to extreme. Oh, no, it's, uh, I don't think you should take it to extreme. That. I'm not suggesting that. No, I don't know about that others suggesting that. I didn't ask the court to rule unified. Is this what you're talking about? Your saying it's not part of the plan. You both are both. I think that's true. Let me explain no, no, to you something. Let me tell you something. I'll give you an example. I don't know if you ever went with me on a trip to Maine. When you go to the Earth. You never went? Come this year. Part of this trip is we went. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, we, uh, in Elul, several shows ago. I don't have the date yet, but I will let you know. What is this? September. September. No, no, no. Before Rosh Hashanah. We go before Rosh Hashanah. We go to the Rebbe's house as part of the visit. It's fascinating. You were there. We were there last year. Yeah. We go into the Rebbe's house. You see the simplicity which the Rebbe lived. And you see it most when you walk into the kitchen. The kitchen is from 1957. Same kitchen that was there all when he bought the house. When they bought the house, same, same stove. It's a 1950s stove. It's a 1950s cabinet. Nothing was changed. So you say, wow, I mean, why not? What? It's not that, it's not that you're, you're, you're denying yourself. A, a, per, a person like the Rebbe is not denying himself. He doesn't need that. He, does, it doesn't, he doesn't he seek that. He it. doesn't need that at all. That's what, oh, okay. Ultimately, eventually, when you stop indulging so much, your priorities change. You, you begin to realize it's not even an extreme. It does nothing extreme. I don't. I don't take interest in this. But my interests have. My interests are totally different. All of a sudden, I don't have those interests. There are some people that they can't live without a Rolls Royce. They need a Rolls Royce to 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 their fulfillment, like you're saying. Most people, even if they have money, I don't need a Rolls Royce. It's, I have different interests. I have different. So you're saying you're denying yourself a Rolls Royce. What's wrong with you? You're an extremist. I'm not an extremist. I don't need this. No, no I know you're not going to say that's extreme, obviously. No, My point is, okay, so we could take that to the next level. Not a Rolls Royce. Someone say you don't need a new car every 10 years. No. I said, I don't say. <laughs> It gets me from point A to point B. It's what I need. That's all I need. I don't need a you know nice fancy looking car. I don't need a fancy looking couch. My couch that I bought ten years ago is just as fine. There's no problem. I don't need it. Your priorities change now. The, I don't believe Dal Tareb is talking about extremism at all. I think Dal Tareb wants a moderated type of situation, but he's talking about the concept. The concept over here is what you need to appreciate. We, it's a paradigm shift, really, when you think about it. 
we take for granted, you know, what's the stay in the way in the Constitution? Is there a pursuit? Uh, what is there? A pursuit for happiness? No, what is this? Yeah, this, yeah that, what, what, this a whole line. I forget what it is. Yeah. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. What is the pursuit of happiness to most people? To be successful materially. That's what the meaning of that is. To most people. I don't think that's what the framers meant when they wrote it. They meant all kinds of happiness, whether it's religious happiness. It's, you choose your happiness. It's your right to choose your happiness. But most people think that success is material success. They put their kids through school for that. They, everything goes into that. get married they exchange one set of things in life for another set of things in life and then when you have children even more so now you exchange you know, it's not about you anymore it's completely about the kids so it's not like you've lost anything you just exchange one set of needs and wants for another one it's an organic process it's not you're not affected by it you're not compelled by it. No, I'm the, the concept that the concept, the concept of that you can't enjoy the it's, thing, the, the, the key word is indulge. The key word is indulge. More important than God is that you do it yourself. It's not my problem. I want it the way I want it to be. You can accept the food that you want to eat. So, so, so let me take it. So let me, let me, let me. More important than I, I need that once in a while. Yeah, I agree. I want what I want. I mean, I need I understand. to go to the doctor and my body correctly. I'm not putting my Well, you are a little, you're not thinking, it's not a conscious thought. I agree with you. But in the subconscious, really, if you analyze it, what it is, is a, bit, a little bit of that because. Not prohibited. <coughs> it's not prohibited. You're right. That's why I made that clear. It's not prohibited. But what it is, is It's putting you, it's giving yourself a certain um, unrealistic importance. You what said. do I mean by unrealistic? The truth of life is that there's one important creator to the world. He created everything in it to serve his, to serve his purpose. If something is not serving his purpose, it's a problem. Would we agree? Imagine in your own house. Everything in your house is there to serve your want. If there's something over there that is, there's a mouse running around in the house, it's a bad problem, right? You don't want a mouse in your house. A mouse is a sin. Or would you like dust on top of the fridge? I, One I, second, I, you want dust on top of your fridge? No, but it's not like as bad as a mouse. I agree with you. But it's dust. It doesn't belong there. Do you I understand when you say you do something for him. Something, but if you do something that is not for him. I'm, I'm saying. saying can I'm you giving it. Can you rock concert? Feel, I don't you know. I'm not so sure. Better person because he is serving God. And he is so God. good. So then it's that's part of God's service. Then it's then it's good. Yeah, but so, I said that. If it's that's what sanctify means. If it's being done. So I can then serve Hashem better. By all means, I said that. I think I said that. Pretty sure I said that. You can turn back the tape and watch. What's but the, the point is, on my vacation and not going to a rock concert. Can you sanctify your because vacation? Because today's vacation. yeah. You, okay, you, I, I yeah. rest. I can come back. I can dive. And yeah, I can sure. Have a vacation is a good thing. Vacation is an important so, thing. So if he goes to a rock concert and he says. One so now you're getting into the, the specifics saying, of this okay, environment. Is it, a, is it a good environment? I don't know how many rock concerts are a good I, environment. I but, but, a good yeah. environment. Let's assume okay, so that's why I said yeah, right, God right. for the health that enables him to go to the rock concert. He thanks God for Led Zeppelin. He thanks God for beautiful music. Right. He thanks God for, the, for you know, that, that... If it's I, completely I benign... Say, but, he was, but he was conscious of If God it's completely as, as benign... A gift, as a gift from God. If it's completely benign, meaning it's not, there's no aspect of sin involved, 
then if it serves a purpose to bring you closer to Hashem, it's definitely, a, it's not, it it's not in the mindset. same, I, I said that from day one, it's yeah. your mindset. But I s- question whether most people going to a concert are doing it to, for that purpose. I think it's, you know, a lot of times our own, it's kind of a mixture, if you will. It's like eating on Shabbos, yeah? Is eating on Shabbos a mitzvah? Sure it is. But do we indulge? We could. You can indulge while doing the mitzvah. See, it becomes very tricky, right? Yeah, I remember I told you the story with the guy, with the, they saw an, a bull wearing a streimel. You remember that story? Yeah. 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 Right. It's very good. That's good. That's very good. There's no problem. But, but you can see there are other mitzvahs. Let's say somebody likes to go to strip club. That's they feel healthy no, afterwards. I'm exaggerating to make a point. I'm exaggerating to make a point. No, the difference between going to Led Zeppelin, for instance, and Cup of Tea, you, both of these take you away from concentrating on being close to God. The one is an absolute sin. You can eliminate that immediately. But the yeah. point I'm trying to make is there's a fine line in here. If it, if it, is it about the fact that the activity could be sinful? Yes. But on the other hand, it's also about activities that deflect you away or remove your concentration from... Uh, we talked about this. If you see the sun rising over Grand Canyon, you can't... Let, 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 let's bring this back a second. No, just but, what I'm saying, but isn't it really a function no, of whether or not you're... No, what my the, point is that you, I need to see the sinful in order for me. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with it. And, 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 no, and, that, and that's fine. And that's fine. And that's truly fine. That's truly fine. If it's if it's a it's an objective need. If it's an objective need. If it's an, well, you, the more you're in touch with it. No, because it isn't because it could be it could be also. It's exhausting. Um, I don't know if it's exhausting. It it's a discipline. It's a serious discipline. I agree with you. It's a major discipline, and people have done it. And been very successful with it, and have elevated their lives to a very, very special place. Is it the, is it the, is it the path for most people? Are most people walking that path? Not fully. I hope somewhat. And it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress. It really is a work in progress. Every day is a new battle, and every time, well, the more you can be elevated and the more you can be sanctified in the permissible re- arena, the better you're going to be. The more refined you'll be and the more in touch with God you'll be. And the less you are, you may not be a sinful person, but you'll be very self-centered. And being self-centered is not God-centered. And it, sometimes they clash. And that's what the al is talking about. Does he want moderation? Of course, he shouldn't be a hermit. He doesn't want you to be a hermit and be you know, getting sick and getting because you're not mal because you're malnourished and you're not eating and you're not sleeping. That that Al Qarab is not referring to that at all. I just want to make that very clear. He wants healthy people, not he wants fresh people up and and, and, and <coughs> well slept. He doesn't want people that are falling asleep because they're because they're not sleeping because that's indulgence. No, that's not what he's talking about. He, he we we know very well what our deficiencies are, how self-centered we could become sometimes, even when we're not doing anything wrong, sinful. But we're self-centered. We think about ourselves and to the exclusion of God sometimes. It happens. And we have to be a little more disciplined with that. See, he's saying, I just want to finish this thing and I'll let you ask your question. One second. One second. One second. She, she wanted to ask him, but I want to finish this paragraph. Because it's going long. Also, at times... He is unable to wage war against the evil impulse so as to sanctify himself in the things that are permissible because of the heaviness of his heart. We're getting back to this. This person has a certain dullness of heart. It plagues him. And he doesn't have the strength to battle. Like you're saying, it's a, it's a battle to always do, you know, it's a battle. It's also a discipline. And his dullness of heart makes it very hard for him to do this. And sometimes he can't. He falls into indulgence, okay? What were you going to say?
It's a distraction. I want to tell you this. What you're describing <coughs> is people that they need to drown their problems. You know, they say people drink to, to drown their problems, but they don't realize that problems float. And <laughs> but that's a totally different situation. That kind of eating, that kind of, that, that's, there's something wrong. They have problems in their life, so they're, they don't know how to deal with it, so they're eating. Instead of getting fat and getting unhealthy. Well, today was not talking about that. He's talking about perfectly healthy people. No one's eating to distract their problems. They're eating because they love what's in front of them. They just, they're trying, they want this food. They like, they're going to this concert because they like the singer. They're going to the movie because they like this movie. They're in they're, they're, it's their pleasure. It's, it's, it's for their pleasure. Is pleasure a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. If, if, it's, if it's pleasure that is only about you, then it's, a bad, then it's not good. Then it's, then it's very, very self-motivated. It take, that, that could be a problem. And most of us suffer from this. We're all, like he's saying, we, we, we're just, it's too extreme if you're not. And that's why most people don't can't live this life all the time. Well, they don't. They could, but they don't. It's very hard. It's a huge discipline. It's very every time it's a decision. I, I told you the story of my Hasidic mentor in 1984, 85. I had a teacher. He was this big, this thin. And he would come to Fabrengen, Hasidic gathering, where he would lead, he would speak. And he would only eat what his wife cooked, for, baked for him, and made for him. And she, she would send him with a little bag, with some maybe some cookies or whatever it is that she pre prepared. And you could see that a man was careful before every cookie he took. And you see, he took it, put it back. And you could what, literally read what's going on in his mind. I don't need, why am I taking this right now? I need this. I put it back. The man was totally disciplined. Not, 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 even for him. not for him. It's only extreme if you if you if you don't involve yourself in that at all. Well, but it, the more it you, but it requires a level of consciousness of discipline. There's no question about it. Don't have that. I agree with you, but it doesn't mean they can't. And the, Right. So why do you mind people? He does this, he does this. No, but but it's not. I don't know why is that the same. How are you compare, comparing those two? Okay. So well, let's talk about this. What are the benefits from foregoing from uh, eating your animal desires or whatever you want? Why why do? Because he's being on the truth with him. He's being truthful. Right. So the truth is that I don't need this right need now, it? and if I take right. it, I'm putting myself in, uh, above. The truth is no good. So to your point, is that seems like in my point of view, that seems like a tremendous discipline to, to remain that conscious. There's no doubt it was. A, it but, is a tremendous. But discipline. if he's conscious, and he, I, I don't think he ever picked up the cookie and put it down. He wasn't going to be 
gratified by it. It's when you realize it allows me to come closer to God in that moment to say, right. I don't need this. Right. What am I? Who am I? I want it because I want it. I need it. You want to be close to God. No, no. The, the point is, I want. I'm going to eat this not just because I want it. Who am I? Why? Don't, why is my want important? Yes, my time, want is not important. But when you're hungry, okay. your hunger is different. Hungry you have to eat. He ate. He was never sick. This person. He was never sick. And never. But he was a healthy person. <laughs> If you need it, yeah, whenever. I think most people, when they go on these cruises and these excursions, it's more about them than getting back to serving God. You need it. I agree. I agree. You need it to be healthy. I agree. If you so the but I think that when we have the problem that is very That's the second thing. That's a, that's, it's the it's it's two symptoms of the same problem. Yeah, but when, when you are um, control yourself and you have to eat, uh, you need to eat more and more than you want. And when you get more you have more sense of it. When you get more specific, you get closer to the spiritual life. If you are doing you know, eating all the so again, you forget the spiritual part and you go into only you know, the physical part of eating, of fun, of drinking, but when you control yourself, I feel, you know, that you feel it with the emotion, you know, I eat with the, uh, I drink with the emotion. When you get with that, you get more spiritual. So sometimes when, when, you, are, when you get full, when you say, okay, I will eat a little bit, uh, not too much, I think you control yourself. And I think it's good to control because you get into the, the body. For example, uh, talking about you know, the sukkah. You know, if you see people living in the sukkah, you know, when you get in there, you begin to feel about you know, the sensitivity of what other people in the world are living. You live in a nice house, but you are you know, living in a sukkah, so you begin to feel any more emotional and more uh, sensibility, you know, uh, sensitivity and more. I think this is, I think, what I'm talking about. Not if it's good or bad. You can do everything is you know that you like, but again, if you are controlled in the way you do it, I think it's much better that you you eat. Like you said, if you eat a little bit of chocolate and not the complete bar, it doesn't make sense because you are more in the in the control. Again, Let me ask you a question: Is there anything that you want to do that you say to yourself, "I don't need to do this, and therefore I'm not going to do it"? There is. And, and what makes it not extreme? What, someone else will hear you say that. It means like this. You have the money to do it. If you don't have the money, we're not, you know, then you can't do it. I'm talking about something you could do. Something you could do and you want to do. You would like to do it. But you say to yourself, it's a little too much indulgence. Do you ever have those moments? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you realize that? Where are you drawing lines? Okay. So for you, the line is where you are. I'm telling you that if you told, I'm not going to ask you examples of what you ever said no to yourself, <clears throat> but there's someone out there that will hear that you had the ability, you had the money, and you had the want, and you just didn't do it because you didn't want to indulge. He's going to say, you're not normal, there's something wrong with you. Why not? If you could do it, and you didn't steal the money, it's your money. God gave it there for you, for your pleasure. Why not do it? But you are sensitive enough to say, I don't need everything I want. For some other person, that's extreme. That He would look at you as an extremist. What is an extremist? You're not sinning. You're not doing anything wrong. Why deny yourself? He doesn't. No, some people will not understand this discussion I'm having with you. And they will not understand why you would ever say no to something that is not a sin. If you could do it. You could they don't understand it. Some people just really don't understand 
what is the value of not giving yourself something that you want? They'll, they'll even make it a holy. They'll even say, didn't God create this for our pleasure? They will say that. But yet you have a sensitivity and say, there's something about too much indulgence. A lot of people don't understand that. They will say you're an extremist because they don't draw the line where you do. To them, as long as I don't sin, there's nothing wrong with indulgence. A lot of people will take the position that what you do. And let me ask you something before you ask. I want, what is wrong with indulgence? You tell me. Why did you ever say no to yourself? I want to tell you why, why do you say no to yourself? So, what I really need that is to get that person to say to me, you are very stupid. You need to do this. You need to work on yourself. You need to do this. But do you, realize, do you realize what you're saying? You think about everything you do. You, like, there's a conscious thought to everything you do. You, is this making me a better person? Do I need this for my health, my mental health, my sanity? You're a very disciplined person. You realize how... Uh, the, you're this teacher of mine, but in a different way. He's thinking, do I need this to become closer to God? And you're asking, do I need this for my health? You're a very disciplined person. I'm telling you the people out there that would look at you and say, friend, what's wrong with you? You're an extremist. Just enjoy life. Because enjoy God. life. What's wrong with enjoying life? Because before God's not you don't need it. You're right. I don't need it. But it's enjoyment. Go enjoy life. They won't understand what you're saying. Now, there's some people that cannot relate to what you just said. I mean that. Because it's a hard concept. Why not enjoy life if you're not hurting anyone? You're not hurting your relationship with God because it's not a sin. What's the problem? Most people, I think most people wouldn't understand the problem with that. I would rather have kids who have a heart for God. Yeah. First of all, I don't think that's true. The thing that you think you're denying yourself from, I was told you're not denying yourself. You don't want it. That's what I think. Okay. So if you can be zero from this, you can find it. I have but he won't agree with you. I don't know if he would agree with you. But, 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 there are but it could be your right. Okay, some issues. Okay, so binary, up or down. So basically, I have the resources. I really want it. I'll give you a whole litany of reasons why I really want it. If I really, really want it, I'm going to get it. <coughs> if I don't do it, like for instance, well, one second, know. Howard, I want to ask you a question. Why? Why don't you believe him? He's saying, I really want it, but I don't want I, I think it's not something I need. I, I'd ra I don't need to indulge. Because, Why don't you because, give him that benefit of the doubt? Because I don't, if it's, if I have all the respect in the world for Dan, but I, but, I, but I understand human nature. The sense of human nature is that you cannot underestimate human beings fully to rationalize virtually any decision you want to make, good or bad. In this case, if I have a resource for Really, really, really want it, then I'm going to get it. No, but you take on basic examples. You don't have to give it. Well, that's the example. Right, really that's right. Here's an example. Like, for instance, no, I but, would, but that's like why well, that was my question before. If, 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 if you really want it and it's not sinful and you have all the money to do it, why deny yourself? What's the why is this a virtue that everything I do has to fee, has to yeah. make me a better person? You deny where did you get that from? You where where does that say? Is there some value system that you grew you up got, with that everything I do has to have you this so he's saying the rather it pursue is to, is to be more or less indulgent if I don't need it that's or, a discipline or to go exercise and I'm asking him power. and I'm asking him where did you get that value from where's that value come from and let's analyze it a minute is it a is it a value that most people that we should all try to, uh, you know, incorporate. Right. Some and people say, "What's wrong with indulgence?" They don't understand what's wrong with it. What? No, but I, but I think it's what, what I'm trying, I'm challenging you is to try to explain me why is that a positive? Maybe you're wrong. Maybe there's absolutely nothing wrong with enjoying. What is out there to enjoy, even if I don't, it doesn't make me a better person. I think it's, it's illusory. It's an illusion. Why? Because, because if say, say I want an expensive car. 
Because you don't really want it. That's what he's saying. Because you don't really want it. Or say I have $5,000 to buy a watch for you. Right. It's a decent price for luxury. I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> now it's nine grand. Yeah. They're up to nine grand. You're going to spend nine thousand dollars for a watch, and you don't see it. You see the watch. You want that watch. You shop hard for that watch. You don't buy the watch. Why don't you? Buy it? If you don't buy the watch, you don't buy the watch. You're better off to leave it for another reason. You might feel guilty about indulging, but right. But in the end, if you don't buy the watch, which are the reasons for not buying. That was stronger than your reasons for buying the watch. And what is that reason? Discipline. To be no, a better person. No, it's Maybe it's to be a better no, person. This is not this, this discipline is not involved. How do you know? It is involved for him. What I'm saying is the discipline. In other words, let me just finish up because I have to leave. The point that I'm making over here that Al Tareb is making, discipline not to indulge in things that are permitted is a value. It's a real value. It's a real value. You take it. You're saying, I'm going to try to take whatever I can up to a certain point. When you get to that line, I realize that's already, I don't need that much. So I'm going to value this value at that level. My teacher valued it at this level. Because his priority. I, I, compl- I agree. I so agree. But my point case, is. His alternative to eating the cookie. I God. agree. See, I agree. Not and and I will agree with them also. Summer camp. And for him, it's not sending his kid to summer camp. It seems that he has a value that says that my, every I don't have to give in to every one of my wants. Just that alone is a value to him. Not because I have a bigger want, a more important want, because the money can be used for better things. He's saying I don't need this money. This money is going to lay in my bank I account. Your priority is I, close to God. No. As good a priority. As a good an alternative Fine, priority. good. Actually, it's a much better alternative priority. But that is the value that he's talking about over there. Yeah. He's saying that less indulgence brings you closer to God. Even and, and most people have a hard time with this. So they say, in moderation, I agree. Where's the moderation? For you, moderation is this. For someone else, moderation is this. For the Rebbe was something else. Forget about it. The Rebbe's on a higher level. But regular people that are my teachers, they they, they didn't... Uh, I'm, uh, I have to indulge in a cookie for what? I don't need to indulge in this cookie. It's an indulgence for him. That's and he didn't do it. You told wait, me. wait, wait, wait. You just you just mentioned this. We are not being indulgent. We're talking about... We're not being indulgent. We, we could be. We try to be a bain on it. Are we talking about the Rebbe? That's the Rebbe is not a Bain. The Rebbe is a Tzadik. He's a Tzadik. But he's a Tzadik. He lives in a town for 1950 in a very simple house. Right. He doesn't care about the... So this is the Rebbe. If you see about the animals, they... That wasn't the Rebbe's... Wait, wait, wait. wait one wait, second. I want to correct you. That's not what made the Rebbe a Tzadik. I know a lot of Hasidim no, no, no. that have kitchens from 1950s. Okay, but again... It's not not, not the Rebbe's. Wait, wait, wait. They mean the police sure. suffering? The point, They're not suffering. They, they mean, they, My they, point. They, they they mean, give, me, give me a second. Give me the point. We are the tzaddikim. We are the animals. But we know the Kanika, such as the Kanika, don't care. We're in the middle. Right. So when they're in the middle, we need to be not... not a, so we need to enjoy ourselves. But we need to know that if a tzaddik don't care about the it's not only Sadiqim, even Bain and Imran. Oh, my point okay. is, my point but, is. So we need to be in the middle. That means enjoy the concert, but also don't, for example, if, if you have $5,000 to get a watch, then maybe you spend $100 and to give $4,000 for charity or for something. So this is my point of view to be. So let me it's tell you something. There's a, you, I don't know. You see, that's a very subjective line. Your middle is your subjective middle. Is there an objective middle? Point the, point the, my point is, here's my point. My point is, the Al-Tareb is re- revolutionizing over here a concept. 
The concept is just because something is permitted, it doesn't mean you should take it. And you, because if you do, in, you're indulging, that's not good. Why is it not good? Because you're giving yourself a false sense of importance. My pleasure. I want it. Who are you? So if you're not, you're becoming sick and malnourished because of this idea, you're off. That's not what God wants. As long as you keep yourself healthy. But this is the, the point that I wanted to make, that I want to get in. I'm happy you brought up what you brought up because it just tells us that you also appreciate such a value. You just appreciate it on a much different level. You can't relate to a chassid not taking a cookie when he would like to. You think that's extreme. The chassid would say, extreme? Cookie? What the cookie? Physical world, an animalistic soul, who needs it? What is wrong with you? <laughs> he, thinks you're, you're, he thinks you're an animal. Not God forbid, you know. The point that he doesn't see himself extreme at all. He thinks we're extreme animals. <laughs> you have to go on a cruise? Are you kidding me? Where did you grow up? What kind of a human being are you? Animals go on cruises. Animals indulge all day long. A human beings, your discipline is so what do you need over there? You need the 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 the, 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 the smorgasbord there all day like a like a chazan. Right. You know what I'm trying to say is the, 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 my important to me is to inculcate into each one of us learning this that this is a value in its own right. Period. Once we understand that this is a value that giving into your wants, even if it's completely permitted, is a negative, we've made progress. We've made progress. And I want you to understand why. He's saying, you're probably going to frame it in words, because you shouldn't be an animal. You have to be, eh, I need everything. You, know, you feel that that's some, there's, a con there's a compromise there. When you have to have everything, there's something wrong with you. You can't put it into words. What exactly is wrong with that? Dr. Rabbi puts it in words. Very simple. You are giving yourself too much. You, you, you're so self-centered that you don't have to, the, 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 there's no limit to you. You give yourself an incredible inflated importance. My pleasure right now is more important than anything else. Who said that? Where, who told you that? It's not more important. Calm down. Stop thinking about yourself all day long and think about something more important. And if you could do it one time a day, great. You could do it a hundred times a day, even better. And the more you do it, the more of a mensch you are. That's what the Alter Rebbe is saying over here. And the, the problem with these people is that sometimes their heart is so stone-like that they can't fight this, they can't discipline themselves. They don't have the strength to overcome. They'll never sin, but they are the, the Bainini is the person that is involved in self-discipline in the matters of, uh, in the permitted matters. And over there, he finds sometimes, and even often, as he says, sometimes even more, very frequent, that he doesn't have, he has a, such a, there's a dullness of heart that he doesn't have the spirit to be able to do this. See, he, see, he indulges in the proper, in the permitted. And Dr. Rebbe is going to say, I'll do it next week, how you overcome that, what you should do if you find yourself dull and you can't fight your evil inclinations to stop, you know, leading you into more and more of your own, you know, self-centered desires and wants. What do you do? You're not going to like his answer, but... <laughs> yeah, I think so, because the Russia gives in. <laughs> the Russia succumbs. The Tzaddik doesn't struggle. The baby is the one that struggles because he never succumbs. It's always a struggle. The Russia struggles, but he gives in. <laughs> he succumbs. Have it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll be back hopefully next week with more of Chapter 29. It was a very nice discussion. Yeah. We're going to conclude this class at this moment. Take care. Right. Why is this